Okay, clearly, this is completely unacceptable. <laughs> Hey everyone, it's James, and if you've got an RV with these dual pane acrylic awning style windows, well they're great windows, they're well insulated, they're quiet, and they open like in such a way that you can leave them open in the rain, that's all great, but they have a fatal flaw, and that has to do with these window struts, and that's probably, you've probably, if you found this video, already had a problem of your own, and that's why you searched, and that's how you found the video, but the problem is, is that these struts fail, and they will always fail such that they prevent you from closing your window. And due to Murphy's Law, this is going to happen in the rain, at night, when you're surrounded by a billion mosquitoes, and your windows are going to fail, and you won't even be able to leave. And so, we've had this problem happen a couple times, and I've been trying to think of a solution. And I've got one, and I'm going to share it with you, and what we're going to do is we're going to replace this dipshitty, clicky strut mechanism with a thumbscrew mechanism. We're going to remove it entirely, and we will never have this problem again. The good news is, is that it's easy to do, it's not very expensive, and you can do it with hand tools. I'm going to show you using just the simplest of tools so that you don't have to be, you know, oh, I don't have a bandsaw, so I can't do this. Not like that at all. So it's not too hard. It'll probably take us maybe 20 minutes for this whole window. Let's go inside, and I'll show you the tools we're going to need. Now, the first thing you're going to need is you're going to need a 3D printed part. And if you don't have a 3D printer, that might seem intimidating or difficult, but that's only because you haven't done it yet. So it's possible. I, I have the model. This is the part. I'll show you the part. It's very small. Um, I have the model. I will make the model freely available to anyone who needs it. All I ask is that you do not charge anyone for printing parts for them. That's it. I, we're not creating a money-making opportunity here. I just want to get your windows working. So. You'll need this 3D printed part. Now, you can upload these to various services online that will print them for you for a small fee. If you're lucky, like here, the public library has a 3D printer and someone there who knows how to use it. So you can just take the file that I will provide you and the file will be in a link in the post and the, down in the YouTube description, you'll find it. You can take that file, take it to them and say, hey, print me this. It will print a set of 12 of these. If you have a Winnebago Echo, like we do, you only need nine, and then you have a few extras to mess up with. So you will need this part. You'll need to figure out how to get something 3D printed. So that's step one. So you'll need this 3D printed part. Next, you will need thumb screws. And I have here these little blue thumb screws. These are M3 by 0.5. 16 millimeter long thumb screws. I think you could probably get away with a 14 millimeter long one. I haven't tried anything shorter than that, but I know shorter than 12 won't work. So you need thumb screws. I will put a link to these thumb screws in the description. You'll need those. Now, you will also need, well, this is kind of optional, okay? You'll need a tap. This is a metric M3 tap. This tap was all of $5. It's this Bosch tap. Again, I'll give you a link. $5 tap, and then if you don't have a tap handle, that's another $10 maybe. I'll put a link to that. You don't need that though. You, you can do it without it. You'll also need a nail set. I have just a junky old nail set here. You'll need a center punch. This is for drilling holes. I'll show you how we're going to use all these when we get there, but you'll need a center punch. You will need a Phillips head screwdriver and I'm going to put a link to my screwdriver because of all the tools you use, you probably use a Phillips screwdriver more than any other tool you have. So get yourself a nice one. Get yourself one that makes you like, ah, a screwdriver. Get a good one. I'll put a link to mine. It's from Switzerland. You'll need a longer screwdriver that you can like bang on and pry things with. So I have that as flathead. You'll need a Torx T25 screwdriver. You'll need a drill with a 1 8 inch drill bit, and you will need something to tap or bang with. I have just this junky old hammer. I picked like bad tools except for the screwdriver. Picked bad tools to try to do this with just to show you that you don't need great stuff and you'll need a hammer or something to bang with. Okay, now first thing we're going to do is once we've got our 3D printed parts, here's the thing. So M3 is very, very tiny, tiny threads. And unless you've got a way better 3D printer than I have, it's not gonna have the resolution to print threads that are gonna be good enough to screw into. So we need to take these parts 
and we need to actually cut better threads into them so that these will screw in. There are threads modeled into the part, but they just don't work all that good because the resolution of the printer is not that great. So it is possible to do this without a tap. You can basically just take one of your thumb screws and start threading it in slowly. And I did two of them this way. I just try to thread it in a little bit, cut some threads, you back it out. You thread it in some more, cut some threads, back it out. This is harder than this, so it will work. It's just gonna take you a long time. I gave myself a blister doing two of them, but it is possible. Easier way to do it is with a tap, so I'll show you that. Okay, gotta cut some threads into these tiny parts, so I'm gonna hold them in this vise, and maybe you don't have a vise, but you just need to hold the part. You don't have to have a vise. Take your tap, and you wanna try to get this hole just straight down the middle, and you're just gonna screw this in there. There are already proto-threads from the 3D printing. So all we're gonna do is cut the threads, and you can see it's cutting some of the material. We're just gonna cut the threads with this, and go all the way through, and we're just doing one window here in this video, so we're gonna do two of these. You can see I've cut all the way through there. All right, I'm working on the second one here. You know, wherever you are in your tool career, once you realize that taps and dies exist and you can cut your own threads, it's just life-changing. And so here we go. We are... Looks like we're all the way through on this one, so I'm just going to back that out. Okay, once you've got the threads cut, you just want to verify that you actually can screw your thumb screws into these rather easily and that's just going right in, like it was made to do it. So there we go. Next, we need to go get the struts out of the window. So out to the, out to the van, and you will need Phillips screwdriver. Okay, removing the window's struts, I find it's better to do it with the window closed, not necessarily because it's easier, but because when you drop a screw, and you will drop a screw, it's going to fall inside the RV, and that limits the universe of where the screw can be lost to, to places inside the RV. It's only four Phillips head screws, and do not, I repeat, do not use a power drill or driver to remove or install screws here. You're screwing and unscrewing in delicate plastic. You do not want to torque the screw off, ruin your window. So use a manual screwdriver, and we're just going to undo these two here on the uh, latch end. There you go. All right, so that's that end. Now with that end on, and when you put it back together, the silver screws go in this sort of latch end, and then the screws that go up here, and this, are the black ones. And there is a little spacer piece. Don't lose this. Plastic spacer four screws. We're even just going to leave the screwdriver there because we don't need it for the rest. We're just going to work on one at a time. So into the, into the shop. Here's the strut. And this one's actually working for the moment. How about that? But we need to disassemble it to get the dipshit mechanism out. And I'm sorry to have such harsh words about the dipshit mechanism, but if you make a mechanism that's got this overly convoluted shape that can be completely disabled by a grain of sand, it kind of qualifies. So here's what we're going to do. There is a T25 bolt here in the end. We are going to take our T25 screwdriver and remove this bolt. There's a little square nut in here as well. Just tilt it and that should come out. Save these two parts. We're going to put them back later. Now, what keeps this mechanism from coming apart is you see how this little thing right here is bent in. Well, that hits on something that's sliding inside this channel. I don't know if you can see it on that channel or not. There's something sliding down that channel, and it hits that bent thing, and that keeps the two halves from coming apart. So I tried to come up with like a really clever way using picks and pry bars and stuff to open this, but I couldn't. So I resorted to brute force. What we're going to do is we're going to take this longish screwdriver, we're going to poke it into this channel, and we're just going to bend this flap down enough that we can slide the two halves apart. So here we go. All 
So you can see I've sort of bent that just a little bit. And be careful with that. You don't want to bend this whole thing, right? That bend is normal. You don't want to bend this whole thing. You just want to bend this little tab down enough so that you can slide these two halves apart. And when we slide them apart, the dipshit mechanism will come out. There we go. So this will come out. And then this little piece here, this spring, will also come out. That's the cause of all our problems right there, this little goofball mechanism. What to do with that, I can't tell you. I throw them away. Now that we've got these two halves apart, we need to do a little maintenance on these two halves before we can proceed. So you want to make sure, ultimately, these are going to just slide against each other like that. That's fine. Now, we've got this tab that we just kind of bent down a little bit. We need to bend it down a little bit more so that when we put everything back together, we'll be able to slide past it again. So what I found is the best way to do that is to take a nail set, put it right on, the t on that thing there. Now, we don't want to bend it out of the way. We just want to get it flush with the bottom of the channel. So hopefully that's given us enough room that we can slide past it when we put it back together. Now, on the back side here, this is what your window was catching in. These one, two, three, maybe four slots is what this part of this mechanism was like catching in to hold the window in place, right? But with what we're going to do, we don't need those notches in here anymore. So we want to kind of try to flatten those out. So you can, again with the nail set, there it is, just kind of try to tap these down and flatten them out as best as you can. It doesn't have to be perfect, but just get them kind of flat. When you're done, it should look something like that. It's not perfect, but it's flatter. Now, if you have a vise, maybe you want to put this in a, vi a vise. But again, you kind of want to preserve the shape of this. You don't want to get it all mangled. So be careful with how much you bang on it. You don't want to abuse it. You just want it flatter. Now that we have this apart, it should become evident what's going to happen with these little parts, right? They're going to fit up into there like that. But this one's a better one. They're going to fit up into there like that, and then we're going to have a thumb screw coming through. And then that thumb screw will press against the other channel, and it will stop the window in whatever position you want. Now, we got to get a hole drilled in here for the thumb screw. So that's next. We're going to put this as close as practical to the end of the strut, not the end that had this square nut in it. Remember this thing that we took out? That goes in this hole. So it's the other end from that. And so what you can do is you can kind of take this and line it up with the end of the strut. And then we're going to take our center punch. And the way this works is you press down and it goes clink and it makes a little divot in the soft aluminum. And we're going to use that to center our drill bit. I would do this on a drill press, but I'm trying to do, do it with simple tools. So we've got that kind of lined up so we can see about how far back we need the hole to be. And then you don't have to be perfect with this, but you do want to get this sort of centered in the channel and in about the right spot. And you, want to, you don't want the hole obviously close to the end of the aluminum, so we're going to go like right about there and center that up, like right there. That looks pretty good to me. And then just press down on this bad boy. And you can see there it's made a little divot and I got mine off center a little bit, but that's okay. We're going to drill an eighth of an inch hole in there. And that hole is actually a little bigger than an M3. So it's going to have a little bit of slop. So the slightly off center hole doesn't matter. We're going to take this divot in the center of our thing. We're going to take our one eighth inch drill and we are going to drill a hole right in that spot. Here we go. We've got a hole. This fits the 1 8th of an, or the M3 thumb screw with a little wiggle room. There we go. 
Now you do want to deburr this, so maybe take your screwdriver or something and make sure there's no, see all these metal filings? You don't want any of those stuck in there, so make sure you've got all that out, cleaned up the edges of the hole. Now we're gonna take this, and this is deliberately a rather tight fit. You don't want this slopping around a whole lot when it's in there, so it's gonna be kind of a tight fit. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this little plastic part that you've tapped a hole in, you're gonna to try to line up the holes like that. And then when you get them lined up, just kind of press it down in there so that it's all flush like that. Then take your thumb screw, just thread that on in there, make sure it goes all the way through. There we go, indeed it does. Perfect. Back it off a little bit, and now you'll see why we wanted to mash that little nub down. We're gonna to try to slide this back. Now it will catch. Again, you want this to be a snug fit. So you're gonna, you may have to work it a little bit to get it past that lump, or you may have to take another whack at flattening that down. You can even, if you don't have a nail set, you could try using your beater screwdriver. But again, we're not trying to break this flap off. We're just trying to get it pressed down enough that we can work this past it. You may have to press on it a little bit, but it will go almost there. Try not to cut yourself when it pops past. And there we go. Now, you'll see, you see how this is gonna work, right? You just tighten that thumb screw a little bit, and when it presses on this bottom channel, that's not moving anywhere. Loosen it, just a half turn, and it slides. Now that we've got that done, we wanna keep these two halves from coming apart accidentally, right? So we're gonna take this same tab we've been fussing with the whole time, and we're just gonna bend it in there a little bit. And for that, I am gonna use this screwdriver and I'm just gonna lightly tap it. You don't wanna break this off, you just wanna kinda of get it stuck up in there enough so that it's not gonna come out and it won't. Now we're just gonna take this square nut and put it back where it was before. It just slides into that uh, opening. Come on, here we go, see? And you got it lined up, Oh, there we go. And this goes like that. And then we put this T25 back in place. And that's all we're going to do here in the shop. So now we can just go back out and reinstall this. Installing this is just kind of the reverse of what we did. I find it helpful to sort of tighten the thumb screw just to keep these two halves from moving while you're working on it. And then we're going to do the window frame side first. So don't forget your, your plastic spacer. Put that back, line up the holes, and then the black screws Go on to the window frame side, so here we go. Again, very important. I can't stress this enough. Do not go gorilla berserk tightening these things. It screws into plastic. You don't want to crack, strip, break, or otherwise ruin the plastic. So use a hand screwdriver and don't go crazy tightening it up. Now, the bottom side, and here are the silver screws. There is this little rubber thing here. They stick to the window 
I had a couple of them fall off doing the uh, other windows on this van, but you do want to make sure that that is there, that little rubber bumper thing. Okay. These have some side-to-side -side adjustments, so it makes sense to put in both screws and then adjust it. Make sure you can still lock and unlock the window before tightening them all the way down. The great thing about these is that to close this one, I've only got one in now, so I'll still have to do it, but to close this one, I don't have to open the window all the way up in order to get it to close now. Once I've got both of these done, I can just release that and it'll close right away. So I don't have to go, woo, and everybody, mosquitoes, come on in before closing the window. So that's how you do it. Now I'm gonna do the other one and then I'll come back when we're all done. Okay, I've got the second one installed. Cool thing about these two, besides that you don't have to open the window all the way, is that if you have them tightened down and a gust of wind comes up, the window won't blow up either. With the other ones, the window will blow up, like somebody could lift the window. This one, the window won't blow up, so like Mel couldn't open the window further on his own. Anyway, and then to close the window, you just unscrew them. I forgot how much I did these. There you go. And you don't have to raise the window all the way up to the top. In order to close it, you can just unscrew them and close them. There you go. And that's going to do it. Now, the one maybe wear item, I don't know. I just came up with this. I don't know how long these may last. But the little plastic parts, right? They're just PLA. Well, I mean, if you use the beginner 3D printing material, which I would recommend, just PLA. I don't know how long those little threads are going to last. So the good news there, I guess, is that if they do wear out over time, it's easy enough to just print new ones, cut new threads, and then install it. It's not that hard, as you saw. So... If you're really worried about it, maybe you travel with a couple spares. The, the 3D printing file that I will provide has 12, and Echo takes 9, so you'll have three spares right away. If you have more or less windows, you'll have more or less spares. Anyway, that's going to do it for this. So there will be a post with all the links to all the stuff I did and some detailed photos on thefitrv.com. I'll put a link to that post in the YouTube description at the bottom of the video. Click over there for links. The, uh, the 3D printing file, which I'll host on one of those publicly available 3D printing sites so anyone can get it. Again, just don't charge anyone to print these little plastic tea pieces. Come on. Anyway, that's going to do it for now. Enjoy your closing windows. We'll see you later.